Welcome. I'm Dave Urban Astro, and this is coming well, a couple months later than what I planned. But over the course of the summer months, one of the things that one does is one either gets new equipment or one upgrades equipment. And one of the things that I got just at the very end of my imaging season this past season, uh, at the end of June, was a new camera from OGMA, and this is the AP26CC, which is the colored camera version of essentially, it's a similar, it's the same chip, it's the IMX571 chip, the same chip that's used by ZWO and their 2600 series cameras. And I'd gotten the camera and the heat came with it and so I haven't been able to actually test it. Even though I received this back at the end of June, I still did an unboxing video and that's what you're going to see next is an unboxing video. So here we are, it's in its case. I'm going to open up the case so it comes in a nice hard protective case. And before I get to the camera itself, here's a USB cord to connect it to my mini PC. That's nice. And of course, here's the power. It's 12 volt power. Uh, Hunt Key is the brand of the power. It's not specifically designed specifically for this camera. It's just a general, uh, it looks like a uh, what is it? A uh, d -d 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 12 volt, 3 amp. Okay, that works. And I'm assuming that it's a center. I'll have to check, but I'm assuming that it's center positive. Usually they show you here on the back, but I don't. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yep, it's center positive. So that's good. I believe this is probably a standard uh, 2 1 by 5. I'm assuming, don't know. And then here's the camera itself. There are no other adapters or anything else in the case. ZWO does provide a bunch of adapters, which is nice. Um, OGMA does not, which is fine, because a lot of those adapters I don't end up using anyways. So here's the camera. It's pretty nice says APSC uh, 20 um, AP 26 CC which I'm assuming means color camera OGMA which is the brand and here's the back of the camera you can see some LED lights right there and Quiv noted that because he used his camera on the front of his uh, Smith Cassegrain with Hyperstar that the LED lights interfered with the light coming in because I'm not using this on the front end of my scope but on the back end I don't imagine that those lights are going to be an issue but if they do become an issue I can just put a little bit of electrical tape over there which is what he did. 12 volt in, uh, input here. It's got a hub just like the ZWO versions do uh, for two USBs so that's great so I can put my filter wheel if I have a filter wheel or at least my guide camera and, or anything else, my focus or whatever I, I can put there. And then of course here's the USB 3 hub. Now what's interesting is that unlike the ZWO cameras, this does not have a screw on and off uh, cover. It's a rubber cover. It's thick. It's very, very thick rubber, but it is nonetheless a rubber cover, which is interesting. But right there's the sensor, as you can hopefully see right there. This looks like an M54 opening. I'll have to check. It could be an M48, but I'm thinking it's an M54 because it takes two inch filters and all that kind of jazz. So. But yeah, it's an interesting cap, and it just goes in like that. It's just a rubber cap, which is fine. 
that works perfectly well for this camera. It's fairly heavy. It's heavier than my ZWO ASI 2600mm Pro. It's, it's heavier. This thing is heavier built. It's got a lot of weight to it. And I know that the tech cooling on this thing says that it can go 40 degrees below ambient, which is the main reason that I picked this particular version up because the ZWO only goes to 35 degrees below ambient. And the five extra degrees in Celsius is all the difference in the world between me being able to photograph at night, even when it's hot, and me not being able to photograph at night because it is hot. As many of you probably know, I live in Phoenix, and I can probably photograph with this thing through most of the month of June, and then once it gets up to 100 degrees at night, where it stays at 100 degrees, I probably will not be able to photograph at that point in time, and I'll have to go up into the mountains in order to be able to photograph. So as I'm packing this thing away, you're probably asking yourself, why did I get a camera that wasn't the ASI 2600 MC Pro and why did I get essentially the camera from OGMA well one of the biggest reasons was I just wanted a camera that could cool more than 35 degrees Celsius ambient temperature because again it's very very hot and so that extra five degrees of Celsius gives me some extra latitude in terms of what I am able, um, what, when I can, when I can shoot and what I can shoot and how I can shoot without having to worry about burning uh, the tech cooler out, if you will, like on the current ZWO. Because I'm finding that even at 35 degrees when I bring it down 35 degrees it struggles on my 2600 mm pro it struggles to get down to the 35 degrees and again uh, in heat sensitive Phoenix that's a big deal so I, I can safely get it down to about 32 and even then it's pumping along at like a hundred percent power on the tech cooler uh, thermal electronic cooling, I believe, is what tech stands for. But the second reason is that, in my mind, I'm an Android user because I hate to be locked into anyone's ecosystem. And what I'm seeing ZWO doing is they're trying to lock, in my, in my mind, again, this, we're now going into opinion here, so take it for what it's worth it's just my opinion but it seems to me that they're following the path of Apple and that they want to be your total ecosystem they want everything that you need for astrophotography to come from them and in some cases and in some sense that's perfectly fine if you have a really really simple setup I can see going all ZWO, everything from the AM5 or AM3 mounts to ASI Air to the ZWO cameras and the filter wheels or the filter drawers. I know that they're working on coming out with a rotator. Um, and once they've done that, then they pretty much, other than a flat panel, which I'm surprised that they're not also working on a motorized flat panel, Outside of that, they pretty much will have you locked up into their ecosystem. And again, it may not be a big deal, but for me, I like the freedom of having choice. And so that's what I'm exercising here is a choice. So I'll see how good this OGMA color camera is. And if it works half as good as I expect it to, I might be tempted to go ahead and pick up the monochrome version as well. It's relatively inexpensive. The monochrome version is a little over $1,800, which in these cameras with these kind of features tend to be fairly pricey. 
So what I'm gonna be doing the next couple days is setting this camera up, getting the drivers downloaded, figuring out where all that stuff is, figuring out what, um, what gain settings that I probably should be setting this thing to, and then taking her out and seeing what I can photograph. I know that the Lagoon Nebula is out and I know that Ro Ofuyuki is out. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get anything on Ro because of where I'm located. I'm looking around in my backyard to see if I could even get Ro. I may have to go to a dark site and that may be, that may be next weekend. Uh, that I can do that when the moon is pretty much um, getting there a new moon. But anyways, I'm anxious to try this thing out for a spin. And like I say, I don't really like to lock myself into anyone's ecosystem. It's like I have a Deep Sky Dad uh, flat panel. I just picked up a Wanderer. Uh, astrophotography uh, motorized flat panel for my RC6 that I'll be figuring out how to attach that thing. Um, and I have a Pegasus uh, Falcon rotator and I've got the Pegasus Astro uh, power boxes and I'm actually considering at least for my main scope my main setup on maybe exploring and picking up a uh, an Eagle 5S, but I got other things I need to get first, like another monochrome camera, so that way I've got a choice of three cameras. And like I say, if this thing works out half as good as I expect, I may just go ahead and pick up the OGMA um, color, I mean, uh, monochrome version of this particular camera. I've already got filters. I just need to pick up a filter wheel and another rotator and then I'm pretty much set to go. So anyways, and that's gonna be progression down the road. And I'm also looking at maybe picking up um, a Red Cat 51 telescope. Uh, it's F4.9, I believe. It's a Petsville design and they're relatively inexpensive but they got a wide enough field i'm really looking for something in the 250 range um, i have broken on which i've yet to do first light with which will probably happen sometime this weekend again if there's clear skies i need to do first light with that guy and see if the roki is going to work so anyway if you found any of this to be interesting uh, especially if you're curious about this camera and how well she performs just go ahead and like this video and let me know that you are at all interested in seeing how the OGMA camera works out and uh, if you so feel inclined go ahead and subscribe it wouldn't hurt my feelings and until next time clear skies and happy guiding